I have four drastically different people behind me. I'll be posing them not just by their body type, but also by what each person likes. What they don't want to show. Avoiding feet. Double chin and like... My upper thighs. And how they would like to see themselves. I want my face to look carefree, fun, effortlessly cool. Hi, my name is David. I'm a portrait photographer and a content creator that teaches people how to pose and be confident from the camera. A common misconception people have is that poses are mostly based on bodies. Although body types can be a consideration when it comes to poses, it is so much more than that. What we fail to realize is that we are all such unique people beyond the body that represents us. Two people with the same body types can have different worldviews, life experiences, and beauty standards, which changes what they want to show in the photos, which body parts they might be self-conscious about, and how they want to use these photos. And to show you this, I brought my team out to the beach to create custom poses for each one of them based on who they are as individuals. First one up is four. All right, four. Tell me a little bit about what you're wearing and then why did you choose to uh, wear this at the beach? I'm wearing a one piece that I always have and my swimsuit cover. Four is probably one of the most modest, proper person you ever come across. I'm not a big fan of like my upper thighs, so I like the little skirt here. And I just prefer more of like a modest swimsuit. However, Four has come through the journey of wanting to take more photos of herself. What would you like to capture today in your photo? Kind of carefree, fun, sexy kind of vibe. While she is modest, she also does want to be sexy. But this is a part that can get really fascinating. How do you pose someone who wants to be a little bit more modest, but also want to feel sexy? We have the wind working in our favor. What is something that you would typically go for? Let's say you had a friend who had no knowledge in, in, in photography, and they were just there to like take a photo for you. What's, what's something you would go for? I'd probably go for a walking photo near the water. We all have to find a couple of things here. Where is the wind coming from? Where is the sun? You can have the best pose in the world, but if the sun is coming way up from here and you're looking down this way, your face is gonna be all shaded. The sun's coming from that direction and up, up very high. So the first thing I wanna tell for is, look towards the sun. By telling her, hey, let's slowly bring our chin up. Let me see how high we need to go up to the point where there's no raccoon eye shadow. And this is the reference of how high she needs to go every single time. And I know it might feel a little high, but at least you know now. This is the sun that we're working with. Every time we take a shot, I'm gonna have you way up here. Then I can start creating a pose around that. So let's go for a movement shot here. And maybe let's go for the drop of the shoulders. You did this yourself, it's so stunning. What we're gonna go for is just a little motion and turn. Yes. And the thing with these walking shots is that we don't actually have to take a lot of steps. All we need to do is go back and forth, rock back and forth, yes. We want to move and feel as many of our joints working as much as possible. If we don't do this the right way where we only feel our hip moving, it will look like this. Right? So what I do is I want to use all of my joints. So take a step and then I'm moving my ankle, my knee, my hip, and I'm turning everything. When you're working with someone who isn't in front of the camera as much, Doing a motion shot might work out in your favor because it lets them be, again, a little bit more human versus a model who has to strike a pose. I'm gonna get a really, another wide angle shot and then go low. I'm gonna show you maybe the difference here. Perfect, a couple more times here. Here's the regular angle, a couple more times. Love, okay, switching to the wide angle lens and let's go. Beautiful, a couple more twists. Beautiful, again, again, again. Love. Something that Four is really, really great here and something that I didn't have to adjust is that Four is having her arms out. It's helping us create this beautiful shape. Yes, and scene. Woo! Next up is Miss K. All right, Miss K, tell me about what you're wearing. Or my peasant girl dress. So something I didn't bring up just yet is the effect of clothing when it comes to posing. 
I thought it was just a really nice, flowy dress. What would you like to see in your photo? Someone who was just effortlessly cool. So considering what Miss K was wearing, I wanted to get something where she was moving, her arms were in the air, I wanted to show off the fabric as well. What would you like to show off? And then the other question would be, instead, like what would you not want to show? I've always been uncomfortable with my hands. I always felt like my hands looked a little weird. So if we could do a pose with my hands to help me see them in a different way. This has got to be a little bit of emotion. We're going to have our foot right here and really point that toe, right? And then give it a little bend over here. Bring it around just a little bit more. Perfect. Now, having the foot inwards really gives it a nice line that goes inwards versus outwards. So we can say that that has a little bit of a slimming effect on the legs. I want like a little tiptoe and then we're looking. Almost like we're like, Whoo. there's a big difference between this and this, right? You're freeing up your body. What I'm talking about here is the difference between just having our hands stuck on here and then turning our body. We're just gonna look like a Lego block versus doing something a little bit more natural with our hand, which is to brush and move at the same time. Another last part that's really important for this, we're gonna go up on the back foot just a little bit. Up and turn. Gorgeous! Okay, you might be wondering, David, why is she going up on her feet? Even though the camera we're viewing from the side and not from the photographer's angle, I want you to see the enormous difference this makes. Watch this right here, where Miss Kay's feet are planted in the sand. Now, you might be seeing this and saying, oh, David, that's just how we stand. I don't see like an error. Let's compare it to when she's on her tiptoe. Now, it's like she's a ballerina because the line at the bottom, it's not being broken. It's now a soft little line. And that visually just shows us like more flow. So I'm gonna use my 0.5 times lens here, my wide angle lens. It's pretty much gonna take all the space around this kid and kind of explode it out like so. Beautiful. I want you to be able to practice this, being able to free up and start the flow of all these beautiful lines. Anyone can dance, anyone can move, anyone can be graceful. And hopefully here, you get to see a little glimpse of what that could mean for you. Let's go for the main pose and go. Gorgeous, again. Go for it with the big smile and go. Love, ooh, she's switching it up. Look at that. Oh, that's a good one. That's so that's cute. So yeah! That is cute. Next up is Val. That's a deep breath through our nose. Okay. Ah. I feel better. She is probably the most comfortable in front of the camera and has spent the most time in front of the camera. Just take a look at her Instagram and you'll see what I mean. She's already a baddie and a hottie. What are you wearing today? And tell me why you chose to wear this at the beach. So I'm wearing a bathing suit top and shorts because I don't want to be too risque. But going through a breakup, so I definitely want to, you know, bring myself back to life, show my confidence again. She just broke up with her boyfriend. She wants to look hot. But not post a photo that's like, oh my gosh, she definitely is single. What are some things that you don't want to see in the photo? Avoiding feet at all costs. I want my face to look like cute, like I'm not stressed or strained. She wants to be a baddie. She's wearing a bikini top. What do you yeah. want to accentuate? What do my you want waist, to show? My waist, my chest. Usually someone like this, they're able to take a really good photo for themselves because they know that preference already. You know, I got some like height to me, so maybe my legs never wear shorts ever without looking like 80 feet tall. This might even make it a little bit harder on my end because they might be very particular about what they're looking for. David, can you help me? <laughs> yes, Are I you can. the one? <laughs> yes. yes. I want to make sure she looks hot and she sees it, she feels it, which means really shaping her body, showing off the decolletage, showing off the snatched waist, showing off the beautiful lines at the legs. So 
Let's go in to see how I create that for her. Let's go to the basic uh, mermaid. Now the mermaid is really good because when we're sitting like a mermaid, we are creating a shape with our body. How do we make your abs look good? How do we like, yeah. So um, let's sit a little bit more like this towards the sun. Yep, okay, great. Let me have you sit on your hip side a little bit more. Gorgeous, and then twist your body, upper body a little bit this way. Yes. So the next thing I do here is I have Val rotate her hip around towards me more. And what that does is when that hip comes around to the front, it becomes larger, which then helps us accentuate that beautiful S-curve from the hip to our snatched waist. Can we bring this hand, that hand, a little bit closer to me? And then turn that upper body a little bit more again, up this way. I don't know the answer, but I'm trying different things. Try turning her body this way and then also this way to see how the light and shading her abs. Knee over a little bit more again, 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 again. Yep, and then let's try covering your waistline and then uncover by moving something in your hair. Love. We're trying to show off the snatched waist. That means we have to be able to see that shape. However, if we have our hand hanging over here, we can't see that shape. So instead, I have Val uncover that shape by fixing her hair. And then I want to do that, that hand, place it over again, like that side behind you, and then sit on, sit on that. Yes, love. Here, the last thing I do as a photographer is I go up on the angle, because I really want to show off that line that's going from the top of her head all the way down to her legs. So overall, we have this lovely shape of multiple S's being created. And lastly is Jonah. For someone who's not used to getting their photos taken and has a anxiety-inducing experience, let's, let's start with what are you wearing today and why did you pick this for uh, the beach? Dude, I'm a fool. I thought it was going to be colder than it was. Jonah doesn't care for photos. What kind of vibe could we go for here? Like chill, I guess. I don't know. What are some things that you don't like seeing um, in a photo of you? Feet. Feet, okay. Uh, double chin and like my facial expressions, I'm like, like self-conscious about. For people that aren't used to taking photos, one, I don't get so close up. I want to be as low-key as possible, create that safe space. The photo doesn't become so much about them. Which just allows him to um, open up his energy just a little bit more. What we do when we feel self-conscious or nervous is we close inwards. When you actually relax, relax, you're at home. You don't even think about this, but you're just gonna relax. Watch out for moments where they're just chatting with you. And if they're in a cool pose like this, this is probably the perfect moment. The only thing that we're gonna change from this is we're gonna go for a little bit wider of a stance. I want him to convey more comfort, which means opening up his body. I'm having Jonah elongate his further leg to create that asymmetry. And if you look at the lines happening here, everything feels very rigid, right? There's a pattern to this, and I want to break up the pattern just a little bit, and we can do that by having Jonah lean over just a little bit because over here, we'll be creating a triangle. And go over that same lean as if we were having a little chat next to you. Creating a little asymmetry feels more like we're capturing a actual moment in time when there was motion. Um, I'm gonna have you look towards uh, the trash can one more time all the way over there. Beautiful. With the framing, I'm leaving that side of the composition open so that the way that Jonah's looking leads our eyes into a breathable space. So we have that beautiful jawline over here. That's another thing that Jonah mentioned. There's no double chin. I'm being very mindful of that for him. And see, that's it. Super simple. That looks good. It's not even about you, right? It's, it's like, it's capturing a vibe. Yeah. I never know, like, right off the top of my head, what pose is great for this person. As I do this, hopefully again, as you've seen me progress through everyone, it's a learning experience for me. You have to learn to ask the right questions. Maybe it's showing Jonah the photo and seeing his reaction and kind of reading that. I want you to rethink the way you see poses. It's not about posing 
for a set of bodies. It's about really creating this custom pose, listening to what everyone has to say about themselves, what they want to see, what they don't want to see, what they want to communicate. And sometimes you have someone like Val who knows what she wants to communicate. And then other times you have someone like Jonah, he doesn't even care for photos. But it doesn't mean that you can't get a beautiful photo for someone like Jonah as well. Any last takeaways? Uh, I found out I don't have to hate my hands. Oh. Found out that I still got it. Woo! At Valerie Baptist. <laughs> <laughs>